Today I'm going to demonstrate something called an HG Fisher diathermy machine. And this is a spark gap diathermy machine that was in reality a complete working Tesla coil that was sold in the 1920s and 30s. It was made primarily for surgical use where uh, tissues could be heated and, and essentially coagulated and then cut away and removed from the body. It was typically used to surgically remove cancer and specifically it was important because the only other alternative at the time was a scalpel and by electrically in a sense cooking and cutting the tissues away there was never excessive bleeding because the blood vessels were actually sealed as they were being cut so it, it prevented the reinfection of other areas of the body nearby with cancer cells. Um, the machines were used in a rehabilitation sense in the same way diathermy is used today to heat from the inside out so you could reduce inflammation and uh, the number one use of it was though surgical basically cutting tissues um, if we look around the room you can see some other machines uh, very similar uh, they were made from different companies HG Fisher, AS Allo, Thompson Plaster Wappler, McIntosh there was a lot of competition but the Fisher Type G diathermy was probably the most popular and today is amongst collectors because uh, they're a simple machine yet very elegant in appearance and the construction is simply superb inside and I have two machines here side by side so that we can take a look at both the internal and external components and if we start off to the left you'll see a variable reactance coil and this limits the current from 1 to 5 amps from the wall and it's selected on the outside by this simple rotary switch now the current's limited to this beautiful high voltage transformer and this is something that really uh, it's important to look at today from a Tesla coiling point of view because uh, the secondary coils are very carefully wound and insulated. They're in two sections and they're grounded in the middle the same as a modern neon sign transformer. Now the difference is there's hardly any protection circuit for this type of transformer and yet it still works uh, over 80 years later. No problem. I've never heard of any of these transformers actually burning out in a machine despite hours and hours and days of use on many of them. Uh, they were designed to operate continuously so in, in the hospital field it, it, you may have run these machines four or five hours at a time continuous and the fact that they still survive and are still working today is, is pretty amazing um, in this particular model the secondary was only around 3500 volts but at a very fairly high current now on the bottom here you can see where the connections for the trans or the um, spark gap on the other side uh, it's a three series spark gap and again very elegant and very simple there's a, a 40 pitch micrometer screw and tungsten buttons on the end and this is the original gap 1920 still works absolutely perfect and the fact that it can operate hours on end really says something about the engineering of it we have some of the original blueprints to these type of machines here uh, specifically to this machine also and we've used some of these inspirations in some of our modern creations here just specifically because it's 80 years old and it still works beautiful we also see some mica condensers or capacitors again very elegant and meticulously designed so that even though the components are exposed, again it's still working today. To the right we see the actual Tesla coil and it's a little bit unusual to see the outside because the primary coil is located right here and uh, it's tapped at the side at, for a low, a medium, and a high voltage and that was basically for the, the medical use of the lower voltage higher powered currents this was more for the surgical side of things and uh, you'll see that half of the primary coil is tapped for the low voltage 
all of it's used for the medium voltage. And for the high voltage, there's a little bit extra wire inductively next to it, which increases the voltage even further. Now, on the inside of this is actually the secondary coil. And it's 2 and 5 eighths in diameter, and it's only 90 turns of number 20 gauge cotton enamel coated wire. Uh, it's not very many turns of wire, but again, this was uh, very limited in the application, so large sparks weren't the, the ultimate goal of these machines. And at the top of the case, you can see this is the terminal of the secondary coil. The other end's grounded to this indifferent terminal. And these are the low, medium, and high voltage posts, which are used for surgery. There is also a meter that I've removed for these demonstrations that would register how much current was actually flowing through the patient. In addition, there's a scale where you could set the meter depending on how much current you were using. So if I switch it on here on low power, dehydrate the surface of, of tissues internally and also for dehydrating the skin. There's not much voltage produced by this machine in any of the outputs, but using Tesla's principles, we can connect an extra coil or tertiary coil to the machine. You're able to demonstrate simple Tesla principles with these machines without destroying them historically. But uh, this is the a common machine. It was used in, in uh, actually the military uh, for many rehabilitation cases during uh, wartime and, and so forth. Uh, it was used surgically across the country. Uh, it was never really considered a quack machine because uh, the, the, the books and materials published by Fisher generally kept uh, within the truth of everything. Uh, there was never a need uh, for this company to, to go out on edge and, and promote things to ridiculous extremes like many of the manufacturers did. So uh, the machine was never banned or part of any sort of conspiracy that you often hear in the alternative medical crowds. Um, it remained in the production throughout the 30s and in the 40s, the only thing that changed with these machines, because of radio, they uh, switched to shortwave and eventually radio tubes were powering the machines.
and uh, so in, in that case the, the concepts pretty much stayed the same but for surgical use it's, it's interesting to note that the, uh, the spark gap type of Tesla coils are still used today uh, you can use solid state and, and tube driven circuits etc to power a coil but you can't exactly get the same degree of, of coagulation and, and cutting abilities that you can with a, a spark gap circuit and it's just because of the damped oscillations versus undamped oscillations and how physiologically the tissues react to them if we walk across the room here in the living room we can see one of the shortwave versions of, of this type of technology this was also made by Fisher in the mid to late thirties and there's no actual secondary Tesla coil circuit in this it's, it's just producing the primary side of, of the circuit uh, it's a l lower voltage than the spark gap machine and it operates at around 30 megahertz it's actually a 12 meter machine and if I open the drawer below you can get an idea of, of some of the attachments and tools that were used with these machines the term diathermy refers to producing heat within the body so they were typically used to treat infections their inductance pads which were used to heat the body basically through dielectric losses by using the, the body as part of a capacitor and there were also surgical and cutting tools that were used with the machines